Just after midnight on December 14, 2010, a man dressed in motorcycle gear walked into the Bellagio Casino in Las Vegas. Within minutes, he had pulled off one of the most daring casino heists the city has ever seen, walking out with $1.5 million worth of chips. This is the story of the Bellagio Bandit and how he managed to rob one of the Strip's most secure casinos. The stage was set at 4 a.m. on that Tuesday morning. The casino floor had slowed to a late night lull. Only the most dedicated gamblers and night owls stayed there, focused only on their games of chance. Security measures were in place as always, but who would dare to rob the Bellagio? It was basically a suicide mission. Well, there was a man who had little fear of dying and a great desire to become a millionaire. He was Tony Carleo, a 29-year-old former real estate investor and small-time drug dealer from Pueblo, Colorado. Carleo had moved to Las Vegas 16 months earlier with dreams of attending medical school and turning his life around, but instead, he found himself spiraling deeper into gambling addiction and drug abuse. On this night in particular, he was fueled by a toxic mix of desperation, cocaine, and Oxycontin, a cocktail of narcotics that would surely make anyone believe they were invincible. So with that on his veins, he arrived at the Bellagio on his Suzuki motorcycle parking near the valet stand with the front tire pointed away from the casino, a getaway vehicle primed for a quick escape. He wore dark coveralls, rubber gloves, and a motorcycle helmet with the visor down, effectively concealing his identity. In his left hand, barely hidden inside his pocket, was a charged gun, just in case something went wrong. As he entered the casino, Carleo's heart raced. The adrenaline coursing through his veins seemed to heighten his senses, making him acutely aware of his surroundings. He moved with purpose, staying close to the wall as he made his way past rows of slot machines. His target? The high-limit craps table, the only one open at this late hour. In a matter of seconds, Carleo closed a final distance to the table. He pulled out his gun and shouted at everyone to move. The stick man, dealers, and players recoiled in shock. Before anyone could react further, Carleo began shoveling handfuls of chips into a backpack he wore backwards across his chest. The chips represented a fortune, stacks of $1,000 and $5,000 denominations, along with the coveted Cranberry $25,000 chips. In just 15 seconds, Carleo had stuffed his backpack with nearly $1.5 million worth of chips, but now fight or flight instinct kicked in and Carleo chose flight. The 200-yard dash back through the casino felt like an eternity. Carleo's vision was limited by the motorcycle helmet, and an old knee injury slowed his pace. As he burst through the heavy double doors, a valet attendant tried to block his path. Carleo used the gun, don't worry, he just waved it, and the man fell back. Seconds later, he was on his motorcycle tearing down Flamingo Road. The heist was complete, but his troubles were only beginning. He had successfully robbed one of the most secure casinos in the world in a ridiculous ridiculously simple way, but now he faced an even greater challenge, how to cash in his ill-gotten gains without getting caught. We'll get to that soon. First, let's go back a bit to the days leading up to the heist. You might think that the Bellagio was just the victim of a guy on drugs, but that wasn't the case. This wasn't Carleo's first casino robbery. Just five days earlier, he had held up the poker room at the Suncoast Casino, making off with $19,000 in cash. That successful heist had emboldened him to attempt a much risk your Bellagio job. But while cash from the Sun Coast was easily spent, the Bellagio chips presented a unique problem. He couldn't simply walk into a bank and deposit his winnings. The chips were only valuable within the confines of the Bellagio itself. To turn his stolen chips into cash, he would need to return to the scene of the crime repeatedly risking being discovered. Most people would lay low after such a high-profile heist, but Carleo was far from the most people. Driven by a potent mix of arrogance, addiction, and desperation, he returned to the Bellagio the very next night to begin laundering his stolen chips. What did he find when he arrived? SWAT teams ready to pounce on him, 1,000 security guards watching his every move, a high-tech system that could detect if he almost wet his pants from nerves. No, none of that. In fact, there were no obvious signs of increased security or suspicion. There were no wanted posters with his face on them and no visible changes to the casino's operations. His confidence was now as high as the stratosphere tower. Even so, he started small slipping a few stolen $5,000 chips into his stack during high-stake poker games. 
The casino didn't closely track wins and losses at poker tables, making it an ideal venue for laundering smaller amounts. When Carleo cashed out at the end of the night, the cashier asked for his ID and player's card but raised no alarms. It was a success, but not fast enough. So in a move that could be both brazen or foolish, he found himself drawn to the very craps table he had robbed just days earlier. As he placed bets and chatted with fellow gamblers, the robbery was the hot topic of conversation. Security foot of the biker bandit jogging through the casino had made the local news, and everyone had an opinion on whether the mysterious robber would be caught. And for Carleo, it was a surreal experience, listening to speculation about his own crime while standing just feet from where it occurred. It fueled him even more. He kept gambling and cashing in stolen chips, and then he attracted the attention of casino management. But not in the way you might expect. They weren't looking for him because he was suspicious. Instead, his new high roller status earned him VIP treatment. The Bellagio assigned him a personal casino host who showered him with comps, steak dinners, a $600 a night suite, and other luxuries meant to keep big spenders gambling. Obviously, Carleo welcomed this lifestyle with open arms. He took to riding the elevator down from his comp suite wearing a beige velour tracksuit, complete with a golden Bellagio B embroidered on the chest. He blew thousands on drugs and women, claiming to have once spent $5,000 at a strip club for what amounted to a four-hour handjob. But it was nothing. The real drain on Carleo's stolen fortune was the very thing that had driven him to robbery in the first place. Gambling. Despite now having access to more money than he'd ever had, he couldn't resist the lure of the tables. He played with reckless abandon, often losing tens of thousands of dollars in a single session. But don't be fooled by this. Carleo's stolen fortune wasn't as easy to spend as it seemed. Over $1 million of the $1.5 million he took were the Bellagio's distinctive $25,000 dollar cranberry chips. These high-value chips are rarely used outside of exclusive high-roller games, making them very difficult to cash without raising suspicion. He knew the Bellagio had records of every gambler allowed to possess multiple $25,000 chips legitimately, and he also knew his name wasn't on that list. So he avoided trying to cash any of the cranberry chips, but other than that basic precaution, he didn't hold back from spending the stolen money. As 2010 ended, his reckless behavior reached new heights. While revelers packed the strip awaiting midnight fireworks, Carleo was inside the Bellagio, locked in a losing blackjack battle. He was betting $10,000 per hand and losing. Pale and sweating, he couldn't tear himself away from the game. As fireworks welcomed 2011, he remained hunched over the table, chasing losses until he had depleted all his chips and cash. Carleo lost over $100,000 that night. He was on numerous pills, not thinking clearly. By then, his drug use had spiraled. He consumed at least 8 80 milligram Oxycontin daily, supplemented with cocaine to stay alert at the tables. Even with all the junk he put into his body, he thought he was far from any danger living out his high roller fantasy. But outside the Bellagio, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department was working hard to solve the case. Do you remember those $25,000 cranberry chips we talked about earlier? A week after the heist, there was a potential breakthrough when a Salvation Army bell ringer tried to cash in one of those chips that someone had dropped into his bucket. Unfortunately, the bell ringer either couldn't or wouldn't identify the person who had given him the chip, so they didn't have anything. Their luck changed a bit when the detectives met a Bellagio poker dealer they would come to call Leo, who claimed to know the identity of the Bellagio bandit. According to him, in the days leading up to the robbery, he had spoken with a poker player who had shared a fantasy about stealing casino chips. And a week after the robbery, Leo encountered the same player again. This time, the man seemed to have come into a significant amount of money, sitting in games he previously couldn't have afforded. Leo's suspicions grew as he spoke with other dealers and cashiers, confirming that the player was buying in with chips rather than cash. The name of this suddenly wealthy poker player? Tony Carleo. When the detectives went to dig deeper into Carleo's background, red flags began to pile up. They learned he held a motorcycle license, had declared bankruptcy the previous year, and had suddenly started gambling large sums of money. But one detail gave them a chilling pause. Carleo's father was George Assad, a sitting Las Vegas judge. The investigation then intensified. On January 13th, a trap and trace was placed on Carleo's cell phone to log all incoming and outgoing calls. 
A week later, they pulled his player records from the Bellagio. The contrast was stark. In the four years leading up to the robbery, Carleo had lost a total of $2,900 at the casino. Since the robbery, he had lost $105,000. They knew he had done it, but they had no way to prove it, and being the son of a judge, they'd better not accuse him without evidence. As the police built their case, Carleo's world was rapidly shrinking. He rarely left the Bellagio except to retrieve stashed chips from friends around town or to deposit laundered cash in a safety deposit box at a nearby bank. At one point, the box had held over $100,000 in converted money. Now, just weeks after his pair of heists, he was down to $20,000. Of the $400,000 in easily convertible chips he had stolen, only a single $5,000 chip remained. As Carleo emptied out his dwindling deposit box, reality began to set in. Yeah, he still had over a million dollars in $25,000 chips, but these were effectively useless. In desperation, Carleo began to fantasize about how to unload the stolen chips. He found a poker forum called 2plus2.com where users had started a thread discussing the Bellagio heist and speculating on how the robber might cash in his ill-gotten gains. Unable to resist, Carleo created an account under the username Ocean Spray 25, listing his location as Cranida, veiled references to the cranberry chips. When a recreational player from Virginia named Matthew Brooks posed a hypothetical about trading worthless cranberry chips, Carleo pounced. He bombarded Brooks with private messages asking if he'd trade $5,000 for $25,000 chips and how many he could handle. Brooks was dumbfounded that the robber would be on that forum given the heist high profile at the biggest Las Vegas casino. Curiosity got the better of him, and he called Carleo's number. During their 15-minute call, Carleo shared robbery details. When Brooks asked for proof, Carleo made a big mistake. He emailed him a photo of two $25,000 our chips on a paper signed Biker Bandit. Brooks forwarded the photo to the Bellagio and Las Vegas police. The email's IP address revealed it came from the home of Judge George Assad, Carleo's father. With authorities closing in, fate dealt Carleo one final cruel hand. While playing in a $1,500 poker tournament at the Venetian, he was approached by a man introducing himself as Dr. Kean Cave, claiming to have heard he had $25,000 chips for sale, and Carleo fell for it. Dr. Cave introduced him to a guy named Dominic, who wanted to buy these chips. Over the next few days, the two men met repeatedly, with Dominic spinning tales about his work in the loan sharking business back east and his plans to start a crew in Las Vegas. They shared $1,000 dinners and hung out in the back rooms of strip clubs and so on, Carleo began to trust Dominic. The two haggled over the details of a deal for Carleo's cranberry chips. On January 30th, Dominic passed Carleo a wine list with $10,000 in cash and smaller denomination chips hidden inside. Carleo reciprocated by handing over a $25,000 chip. Over the next two days, they would execute similar exchanges in restaurants and casino bathrooms around Las Vegas, with Carleo selling a total of $100,000 worth of stolen cranberry chips to his new friend. On February 2nd, the two men met for what would be their final transaction in a Bellagio bathroom near the poker room. He handed Dominic the cranberries, but suddenly, Dominic's demeanor changed. He took the chips without a word and disappeared back into the casino. At that moment, Carleo sensed that something had gone terribly wrong. Within seconds, six Metro police officers burst through the bathroom door, shouting at him to get on the floor. They wrenched his arms behind his back, yelling, don't resist. In the chaos, someone punched Carleo in the face. His knee buckled and his head slammed hard against the cold bathroom floor. The truth hit Carleo like a ton of bricks. Dominic was actually a Las Vegas police officer, but you already sensed that. What about the money and chips he had used to gamble with Carleo and buy the stolen cranberries? It had been provided by the Bellagio itself. Seven weeks after walking out of the Bellagio with $1.5 million in chips, Carleo was unceremoniously marched out a service entrance and taken to jail. The Bellagio Bandit's audacious run had ended in humiliation, sentenced to 16 years at Nevada's Lovelock Correctional Center. In the end, the reality of his situation was far less glamorous than 
and the legend it spawned. In prison interviews, he often expressed regret for his failure to successfully pull off his scheme. It's the oldest gambler's lament. Why didn't I just walk away when I had the chance? In a city where fortunes change hands every minute, where the house always wins in the end, Tony Carleo briefly beat the odds, only to lose everything in spectacular fashion. The Bellagio itself has moved on, its fountain still dancing, its slot machines still chirping, its high limit room still hosting the world's biggest gamblers. The house may always win in the end, but that doesn't stop people from trying to beat the odds. And sometimes, just sometimes, someone comes along who's brazen enough desperate enough or lucky enough to pull off the impossible, if only for a moment. As for Tony Carleo, he continues to serve his sentence, perhaps dreaming of the brief period when he lived like a king, when the bright lights of the strip were his playground. And you, do you have any plan to successfully get rid of $25,000 chips? If you enjoyed this story, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and activate the notification bell. Until next time.